Dewey Hammond here with NFL scout Dave Rosano. Dave, thank you for your time. We're going to talk NFC East. Now, one team that you really love this season that other pundits might not be as high on, the Washington Redskins, Shanahan's team, McNabb's team. Talk about the nation's capital and what the fans should expect there. I see big th things for the Redskins this season. I think bringing Shanahan in there was uh, obviously a great move. It gives them direction. He gives them that one leader in charge, uh, uh, you know, a proven guy, a proven winner. Uh, he's a disciplinarian, and uh, he'll pull everybody together. I think getting McNabb was obviously the key. They haven't had a quarterback there in a while, and they bring in Donovan McNabb, and, and soon after that, they got these two tackles. They got one of the first round, Trent Williams, and uh, traded for Jamal Brown, which is a great move. So to get two established tackles right off the bat and a quarterback to go along with an outstanding young defense, and also Jim Haslam, who I've worked with, he's, he's really good, and I know the players will buy in. Uh, I just see good things in, uh, in Washington this season. Now, you also really like Kolb in Philadelphia. You like McNabb in Washington. So that ended up, in your opinion, being a win-win situation for both teams? No question. I think when you make those kind of trades, you know, everybody needs to win. Otherwise, the trade won't be made. So uh, I think uh, Philadelphia, obviously, know, they know what they have in Cobb. They have enough confidence to hand him the team. And they've seen him long enough uh, to really know the kid. And, um, and they're happy and comfortable with what he is. So let's talk about the Eagles. How do you see the Eagles faring this season? Obviously, they don't have... They're uh, running back that the Eagles fans are so used to seeing, Brian Westbrook, now with the San Francisco 49ers. New quarterback, new running game. What do you expect in Philly? I've said I don't think they're going to miss a beat on offense. I think with their talented skilled players, with uh, McCoy, with uh, Selleck, with Deshaun Jackson, and this Jeremy Macklin, I mean, he's outstanding. So, And backups like Clint Ingram even is a tight end. So I, I think they're going to be really good and dynamic. Um, I, I believe they'll challenge for the title for the uh, NFC East title, I really do. I think this team re re uh, reloads more than they rebuild. I think uh, they have an outstanding uh, personnel department led by Ryan Bricks, and, and um, I think that uh, they, they just they find players, they dig them out, and, and they just uh, they build the interior lines. They have a history of drafting the big guys early, which is great. They got this Brandon Graham, number one, who's a great pass rusher. So I, I just think uh, I think they're going to be possibly be better than last season. And, and Kevin Cobb gives him a different dimension. He gives him a guy a little more accurate than McNabb, moves around just as well, if not better. So I think he's going to uh, be uh, very good this year for the Eagles. Is it accurate to say that you see the Eagles and the Redskins being on top of the division with the Cowboys and the Giants one step below? I think so. I think the, the Giants will fall off a little bit. I think last year, if, it, if that was any indication, the defense was like, you know, in the bottom five in the league for uh, points allowed and yards allowed. So. Uh, I think that uh, they've added some pieces, but I still think they're missing something. Um, they're more of a finesse defense. Uh, Eli Manning is a little shaky. He gets a little hot and cold. And I just think with Tom Coughlin, I don't know, he sort of wears on players. But I see them falling off a little bit. And I also see the Cowboys with the question marks of the offensive line. Um, I, I see that as a, as a huge question mark for Dallas. And to go along with the high expectations, I, don't think, I think the expectations are higher than how they'll play the season. With the Super Bowl being in Dallas, there's going to be all this pressure on them to to win and have a home field advantage for the Super Bowl, but I just, I, I don't think that's a good omen. Better franchise quarterback, Tony Romo or Eli Manning? Tony Romo. I think Tony Romo has a lot of talent. He is one of the most underrated guys in the league, I always thought. I think he has the quickest release in football. He moves around, he gets rid of the ball, uh, he makes things happen. Uh, again, I think the line, will, will, he'll be on the move a lot this season because of the offensive line. I think their tackles are shaky. And, uh, but no, I think, I think Tony Romo is definitely one of the top six quarterbacks in the league. Now, he's had a tendency to fall off uh, at the end of the season after Thanksgiving. And Do you think it's a coincidence, or do you think that, that there's a bit of a mental choke factor there? I think it's a coincidence. I think he's got a lot of talent. Uh, you know, there's guys that do that. Uh, Eli did it for, or rather, uh, Peyton did it for a while. You know, he, he didn't play as well in the playoff games. But I think Romo, uh, all things considered, I think he's got a lot of ability. He's definitely not a choke artist. He just, you know, it's, it's a team game. And... Um, you know, he just hasn't been able to get it done for wh whatever reason. I think he's a very talented quarterback. Now let's talk about a guy in their off offense, Des Bryant. I know there are other receivers in the draft that you like as much as Des, but what does he bring to Tony Romo in, in that offense? He's definitely a big play wide receiver. He's big, he runs good routes, he has good hands. He can catch the football, run after the catch. Uh, the thing with him is his maturity, how fast he'll be able to digest the playbook. Uh, what will he do when he leaves the facility in the, at night and those sort of things because everybody knows about his talent but there were some question marks about his off-field uh, uh, issues maturity if work you will, ethic work ethic so 
again, I think he has the talent, but I think he'll be a work in progress. He won't step right in and produce. I think it'll it'll take a while. So I, I see him uh, uh, producing and being more productive maybe in the latter part of the year than in the earlier part. Best case scenario for the Dallas Cowboys in 2010? I think best case scenario for them is 10 and 6. Uh, I, I think they're just going to struggle with that offensive line. They don't have much depth, and, and again, with, it, with the expectations being so high, um, I just think they're going to fall short. Dave, thank you for your time. Thanks.